Hey, it's Nathan with CrazyMarketing.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Active Campaign Email Designer in order to build great looking emails. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I'm going to be designing an email template. However, if you're designing emails within an automation, you'll get to the same email designer. So the same concepts will apply no matter where you're building an email. But I'm going to be setting up a few templates in this video. So I'm going to come to Campaigns, and then I'm going to come to Campaign Templates, and then I'm going to go to Create Your First Template right here. And then I'm gonna be using the email designer. So I'll select that option and continue. And then across the top, you'll notice that there's some different options. So we have some basic templates that Active Campaign have already like designed for us. So like a new blog post or a product back in stock or new salesperson or a new product category or coupon code or post purchase upsell and so on. So a few really basic templates that you could go ahead and get started with if you want to. Now, if you hover over one and you click on preview, you can see what the email would look like. In this case, it's a very basic email, but on the left-hand side, this is what it would look like on a desktop. And then on the right-hand side, this is what it would look like on a mobile device. So you can get an idea of what the template will look like. We'll close out of this. There's also design templates, and these are the prettier templates that have some color. They got some images included and so on. So these are probably more like your e-commerce type emails. And you can scroll through here and see if anything kind of like looks like something you might use and might be worth editing or something like that. So they have a whole bunch to go ahead and choose from. Then there's also layouts as well. So you could choose to start with a single column layout, a two column, three column, etc. layouts if you want to do that. And then they have past campaigns right here. So if you've already created campaigns in Active Campaign, well then you would see all the emails that you've designed right here and you could go ahead and use one of those if you want to as a template. But we're gonna go ahead and start from scratch because if you know how to use the email designer from scratch, then you can go ahead and edit any sort of templates that Active Campaign already has and you can make them suit your needs as you want to. So as you can see, I didn't actually get a blank template. Active Campaign designed an email for me, so we're gonna have to clean this out. But before we do that, I wanna come over to the right hand side and look at these global settings. So a good idea is to go ahead and set these right away. That way, as you're designing your emails, all the elements will look and feel the same and you won't have to customize each element individually. So a good idea is to come through all the global settings and make sure that you have a few basic default settings set up. So like message width right here, the default is 650. You could change it or not. You could choose to change the alignment if you need to. You could change the padding. Here's your background color. So if you want to change the background color of your emails, you could. Here's your font family. So you could go ahead and select a font family that best suits you and your business. Coming on down here, we have line spacing options, paragraph bottom spaces, underline links, responsive design, RTL text direction. So text direction will automatically go from right to left. Okay, background image if you want to. And let's go into sections then. So then we have different sections. So we have a header section and we could change our default text size if we want to. We could add background color, font color. So that 333 isn't quite dark enough for me. I like the 191919. And then my link color, I'm gonna go ahead and set that to my Crazy Eye Marketing orange color. So we'll set it like that. And then we have content over here. So I'd go ahead and update this content section to some defaults and my Crazy Eye Marketing orange. And then same concept with the footer area. We'll go ahead and make it my 191919 color and the Crazy Out Marketing orange color. All right, looking good. Info area, same concept. And I'm gonna leave that font color a little lighter and we can always edit it later. So if I notice that something's too light or hard to read, I could go ahead and make it darker later. So I'll change the link color. All right, so that's all the section stuff. Then we have heading stuff right here. And maybe I want to change the font color of my headings. I'll do Meriwether Sands. And I'll go ahead and change my default colors real quick. And maybe I wanna go ahead and make them bold for the headers if I want to. And we'll close that up. We'll set the defaults for the buttons. So I could choose to highlight hovered buttons if I want to. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And let's go ahead and change our button color. I'll make it my Crazy Eye Marketing orange color. And then you can see that it automatically made it a little bit darker. So that's nice that it did that for me. But I could go ahead and choose, you know, a different color if I wanted to. If I wanted a gray button when they're hovering, then I could have set that. And then we have font colors. I'll leave those. Textile, I'm going to set the default as bold. Maybe set it a little bit bigger. Change the font to open sans. And I could set the border radius. I could go ahead and establish a border if I want to. Change the border color. Change what it looks like. I could add padding and so on. So all that looks fine. And then there's also mobile formatting options. So I could go ahead and change the default mobile sizes if I want to, but we'll see what happens when I test out my email. Maybe I need to change something, maybe not. So we'll just play that one by ear. So anyway, I recommend going through and adjusting the, glo the global settings first, and then we'll come back to content here. 
Alrighty, so how the email designer is broken down is we have different sections. So as you see if I hover over, it loads up a section and you can see that the email is broken down into several sections. So we have section, section. So we have five or six sections that make up this particular email right here. And then within each section we have structure. So if I hover over, you can see that it says structure right there. If I come down and you can see that there's a structure right there. So what a structure is, is basically the number of columns that you have. So there's one column, two column, three column, four column, a little column with a big column, a big column with a little column. So these are the structures that make up the email. So we have you know, a single column structure, single column structure, and then we have a two column structure right here in the middle. So that way it makes you know two columns like that. And then inside of each structure, we have the different blocks, which are like the elements. So your image, your text, button, spacer, video, social, banner, timer, menu, HTML, RSS. So between the different sections, structures, and blocks, you can go ahead and design like basically any email design you wanna go ahead and create. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is clean out all this stuff real quick. So I'm gonna hover over each section and go ahead and delete it. And in order to do that, I'm just hovering over these three dots, coming over to the trash can and clicking delete. So simple enough. And we'll go over some of these options in just a second here. So we'll come back to it. So delete and delete and it won't let me delete this last section out of here. So I'll come over here and I'll just delete out this particular structure. And so there we go, I'm left with just a structure here. Now, if I decided that I wanted to have a two column structure instead of one column structure, I could drag that over here and then I could delete out my other structure. Maybe if it'll let me, there we go. So now I'm starting with a two column structure, but I wanna go ahead and use the one column structure and then we'll delete out this two column structure right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by adding a logo up here and I'm gonna go ahead and come back over to images, drag it, drop it in there. And then if I go ahead and I click on this particular block or element, then I should be able to select my image. So there's my image right there. Now, if I needed to upload one, I could go ahead and do add a file and I could go ahead and upload an image, but I have one, so I'll get select image. And then if I click on it, you'll notice that the options update on the right hand side right here. So I have some details. So I could go ahead and update my image path if I want to do that. I could add a rollover image effect. I need to go ahead and add a link to my image. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in real quick. And I can also add alternate text, which is a good idea. So Alternate text will show up if the image doesn't load and some email clients like automatically block images. So it's a good idea to have that alt text. So in case the image doesn't show up in the person's email client, they'll know what you're trying to show them. So I'll do image of crazy eye marketing logo. So there we go. I could go ahead and change the alignment of my logo if I want to do that. Center is perfect. I could adjust the size of it if I want to. I could adjust to width, responsive image. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I could add padding to my image and so on. So you can go through and select whatever is relevant and I'll just leave it at that for the time being. So now I'm gonna come back up here and add another section. So I can do that by hovering over the one section, press the little plus button, and then I can select what size structure that I wanna go ahead and create. I'm gonna do another one column structure right there. And so there it is just like that. Now you can see the structure also has some options. So I can select what type of message area this is. So is this a content, a header, footer, info area, etc.? I could change the background if I want to. So I can make it like that if I want to. So you can customize it to suit your needs. There's content background as well. So that's that area. And so there's several adjustments that you can go ahead and make to the different structures and so on as well. So as you're building emails and trying to design things, click on everything and see what pops up over here on the right hand side. Maybe you'll be able to adjust things and customize it how you need it to be adjusted. And I could come over here and click on this particular structure. And you can see that I could go ahead and add columns if I want to. I could change my container spacing, my background color, background image, my padding, all this type of stuff is available in here. So it's just a matter of clicking around. But personally, I like cleaner emails at least in the markets that I service like having a just a text email with like one link or one call to action tends to perform better than having all sorts of pretty stuff going on all the pretty emails kind of look like spam and tend to get glossed over at least in my experience but anyway let's go ahead and add a text block now so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in here and I'm gonna go ahead and add some default text so hey and you may notice at the top here that there's a WYSIWYG editor and so I could go ahead and change the if it's a heading or not I could change the font family if I want to, font size, bold, italic, underline, strike through, and then there's a few more options as well. I could change the colors, alignment, and so on. So several different options are available so you can make it look how you want to. 
But what I want to do is go to personalization tag right here and enter the first name right there. So this would be, hey, first name. And then I could go ahead and type out my email. So this is where my email content goes. And then I'm going to have a signature. Thanks, Nathan. So there's my very basic looking email. But again, I'm just designing a template right now. So this would be a link right here. And I'm going to go ahead and bold this up and then click the link button. And you'll notice on the right hand side, I have some options here. So I can go ahead and apply a link. So let's go ahead and just link to my website just for the sake of example. And you can see that it automatically pulled in my colors and everything from my global settings as well. So that's what my email content would look like. Let's go ahead and add another section now. And this would be a one column structure. So let's throw that in there. And I'm gonna go ahead back out of here and I'm gonna add a spacer block in here. So we'll add a spacer and there we go. That's a nice looking spacer. Let's go ahead and add another block in here. And then I need to add like my unsubscribe information and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another text block in here. So we'll come back over and add a text block in here and let's hover over it and click on this and let me come over and click on the section area so this time my message area is going to be a footer so i'll select the footer option and of course i could go ahead and customize things as i need to but i want to go ahead and add an unsubscribe link so let's do unsubscribe and i'm going to go ahead and click on this personalization tag option and come to message here and there's an unsubscribe link right there i'm going to click that and so this right here would generate an unsubscribe link, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy it and I'll delete it and I'll hover over my unsubscribe wording and then click the link button at the top and then come over here to the right hand side. And for the link, I'm gonna go ahead and do other personalization tag and throw in the unsubscribe personalization tag in there like that. And that'll automatically insert a unsubscribe link for that particular subscriber. So this will let people unsubscribe from the emails I'm also going to go ahead and add another option to, to update their profile. So let's go ahead and click on personalization tag real quick. And we should see an option for update subscription account link. So it's called update link and same concept with the unsubscribe. So I'm going to highlight this, come over here, click the link option, come over here, hit the other personalization tag, throw in the update link option right there. And just like that, I have an unsubscribe link and update profile link. Let's go ahead and center this so it looks a little bit better. We'll center. And then I need to include my physical address in all emails. So let's go ahead and set that up as well. I'm going to go ahead and add another text element right underneath my unsubscribe update profile text element. And in this case, I'm going to click into it and do personalization tag. And we see list sender info multiple lines or list sender info single lines. I'll go ahead and do multiple lines. And we can delete the text out of there. So this will automatically insert my physical address information. Let's go ahead and center it real quick. So there we go. I have my unsubscribe and update profile links. And then also my sender info will automatically be filled in here. Now I'm going to come back to the global settings real quick and update the sections area. And I'm going to come to footer here. I'm going to go ahead and change my link color. I want it a little more subtle than my bright orange color. So I'll go ahead and change that to like a gray color. So unsubscribe and update profile is gray instead of orange color because I only want one call to action to be orange and that would be my primary link right there. So I think I'm pretty happy with this email right here. I could come up here into the top right hand corner and I could go ahead and preview my email as well. So I'll click on preview and I can make sure that it looks good on a desktop device and a mobile device. So I think things are looking pretty nice, right? Let's close this out. And additionally, I could go ahead and send a test email to myself. So let me go ahead and send myself a test email so I can see what it actually looks like when it arrives in my inbox. And I could also go ahead and name my template up here in the top right hand corner. So this would be text template. And so here's how the email arrived in my inbox. So it looks just like I thought it would. It has my logo, has this text here, and then I can see that it included my entire physical address as well. So it looks like I thought it would, and I think all systems are go. So let me close out of that. Now I want to cover some display conditions. So if you hover over a structure, so the structure here, or over the section and you hover over the three dots, you'll notice this option right here for display conditions. And so let me come over to the structure as well and you'll see display conditions right here. So 
let's go ahead and click on that real quick. And so you could go ahead and make active campaigns show different structures or sections based off of conditions people meet. So for example, if I wanted to do tag exists and make it my buyers tag, so this section would only show up to buyers, then I would go ahead and select these conditions right here. And as you can see, I could add multiple conditions as well. So tag exists equals buyer. And I could scroll through here and select another condition if I want to, maybe I want to do like their, their country equals United States or something like that. I could go ahead and do that. So in this case, only my buyers that live in the United States would actually see this structure. Now I could also go ahead and change it to show this content if any of these conditions are met. So that would mean if they're a buyer or if they live in the United States, they would see this particular structure. And you could add multiple conditions if you want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one out of here. So just if they're a buyer, I want them to see this particular structure. Now, if you do something like that, you wanna make sure that you have another structure for those that don't meet those particular conditions. So right now I have a structure for people that have the buyer tag but I need to probably have a, another structure. So let's see if I can find it. Sometimes it's a little finicky. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and edit this particular condition. So tag does not exist buyer. So this structure would be my non-buyer structure. So my content for my non-buyers and then my content for my buyers. And then when Active Campaign goes and sends the email, it'll check for what tag the individual has. And it would include this section if it's a buyer or this section if it's a non-buyer. So you can have Active Campaign, you can have Active Campaign customize the emails based off of the different conditions that people match. And that can be a very powerful feature. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it how it is and we'll come up here and click on save and exit. And I'm gonna go ahead and build another email template really quickly just to go over a couple other elements, but I've covered most everything at this point, but I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and copy this particular template. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this one video template and save. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this particular conditional statement right there. And I'll go ahead and delete this particular structure as well. And I'm gonna go ahead in this case, I'm gonna add a video element over here and I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a link to a video and I can click on that element and link to video. So I paste that in there and Active Campaign will automatically pull in the thumbnail of that video. So that is handy. And I could also upload a custom thumbnail if I wanted to. I also select a different play button if I want to. So I have the YouTube play button, but I could do another one if it makes sense to do that. I could change my alignment, responsiveness, padding, all that type of stuff. So of course, make it look nice for your email. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do, hey, first name. And so I get, and so I wrote a little copy up there and I need to go ahead and add a little bit of padding it looks like. So let's go ahead and add some padding and we'll do some top padding to my video. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a button underneath my video as well. So let's come back over to the blocks area and add a button, drag that over here. There's my button and let's go ahead and click on it. So this would be a link of course to my video. So there you go button label, so watch video. And I could go ahead and customize it if I need to, but as you can see, it pulled in my global settings default, so that's all good. And so all this looks good, looks good, okay, okay. But it is pressed up against my thumbnail right there, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on my thumbnail, and let's go ahead and add some padding to the bottom of it as well. So I got a little bit of nice spacing there now. Now let me go ahead and clone this one text block, and I'm gonna go ahead and move it underneath my watch the video button and I say, I hope you enjoy it, Nathan. So there we go, pretty basic, simple stuff, but I just wanted to show you the, the video element as well as the button element and how you could go ahead and clone other elements and move them around. It's you know pretty self-explanatory at this point. And I could go ahead and do save and exit. And there we go. So now I've created two templates that are on brand with my business and save me a lot of time going forward as I create emails and automations or do campaign emails and so on. And hopefully you now know more about the Active Campaign email designer. And hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate it. And so like, comment, subscribe, and or check out crazymarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.